Hello YouTube, I don't know how long this video is going to be today, but just wanted to go over how I wash my brushes as I wash my brushes because I have a lot of them to wash. So the first part of the video is pretty much all you need to watch. I'm going to be showing you what I do and explaining why I do it. And the rest of the video will be me just washing brushes until it's time for dinner. Um, so I guess we'll just get started. Angle's a little funny, I can't see the screen. So if stuff is out of the viewfinder, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm filming this from my computer and the laptops. Liz is pointed down toward the sink. So let's get started. So usually I wash, I like to wash my face brushes first and wash my eye brushes last. So the eye brushes have a, tend to have a lot more pigment on them than the face brushes. So that's usually my progression. So face brushes first, eye brushes last. And as for tools and materials, you'll see that I have, whoops, I have a dish here and a dish with soap. And the dish in the soap, or the soap dish is just to contain the soap so that all the soapy water that comes out of it doesn't make a huge mess. So the soaps that I'm using to clean my brushes are just soaps that I made that I use for my face and body. These are, um, I really like using these for my face and they don't cause my eyes to tear up or anything. So I figure anything that's good enough for my face it's good enough for my brushes. And I have used these uh, shampoo bars before when in a pinch, I just condition my hair afterwards. However, these are glycerin and shea butter base. So the opaque parts are shea butter, the clear part it's glycerin. So they do have conditioning properties and I find that my brushes don't need a separate conditioner and these also clean the pigment off of them quite well. Uh, this one, uh, kind of turned out to be a blooper. The good ones I give away, the bad ones I keep for myself to use and wash stuff with. So I start by getting a little bit of water in my dish. So there's about a little bit less than a centimeter of water there. And then I'll take a brush, dampen it. And you see me kind of massaging it like this. It's to make sure that the water gets all the way into the core bristles. So if I do crack it open in here, I'm making sure that the saturation reaches all the way to the core of the brush head. And then I take it like this and then just brush and dab it. And that was actually way more soap than I would normally use. Swirl on the back of my hand. And then in the dish is where I do the majority of my washing. So what I'm doing here is I'm massaging and dipping. And then this, what this does, it removes the pigment from the center bristles as well as from the outside bristles. And I'm doing this to get most of the pigment out and most of the lather you kind of are able to see, probably not, but the water's taking on a little bit of a tannish color because of all the powder I was using with this brush, it's coming out. And what the squeezing does is release it. And then I'm gonna do a rinse. I try to stay away from the ferrule, but because of capillary action, the water is going to work its way up into the ferrule regardless of what I do. I just try not to dunk and saturate it. So capillary action, for those of you who don't know, is the tendency of water due to um, hydrogen bonding properties. I'm not going to get into too much detail. It'll creep its way up. So it's like uh, when you watch water creep its way up a paper towel, same thing will happen with brushes. And then depending on the company, they use different glues in the ferrule, but it's a good rule of thumb to um, treat the brushes like they, well, like they're delicate because the glue is what's holding all the hair up in here. So 
if the glue weakens, hair is going to come out. So what that means is it's not good enough to dry your brush for just a day or two. You really want to dry them for upwards to a week, especially if it's a very dense brush, because say given after a week, your brush will probably be dry all the way inside and out and you don't risk um, loosening the hairs if the glue in there is still wet and weak. And this is something I learned from a professional makeup artist who worked on films. And then her recommendation for um, brush soap was actually to use dog shampoo because they use far fewer chemicals in there. And then of course there's the brush cleaners by professional makeup companies that she also used, but her recommendation was dog shampoo. I haven't tried that myself yet because I don't have a dog. I have no need to get shampoo. So that's just a tip if you're wanting to use it. For me, a soap that's good enough to use on my face, that's good enough. You can see almost all the color has been removed and you really want to check in here, especially for foundation brushes to see if the inside is clean as well. The first brush I did was, I think that was a SJ103. This is a Chikohodo T5. As you can see, I'm just rubbing it, not pulling it, just rubbing like this in a rolling motion. And then what I'm doing here is I'm, it's kind of like curling your lashes. I'm progressively clamping my fingers together like this as I get toward the tip to squeeze as much water out as I can. Then let me do one more brush. Just to get it wet. And then if you have sensitivity, you may want to wear gloves when you do this because after a while, yes, your hands can get wrinkled and probably irritated, especially if you have very dry skin because you are using soap, a lot of soap. Well, not a lot of soap, but you're doing a lot of soaping and watering it up. So that was a dip. See how there's still, that was just one dip into the dish. See how there's still a lot of pigment in there? I'm gonna keep doing this in here. The dish is really just to remove the pigment and, and lather up the soap. And this soap has very low lather, which is nice. A little bit more here. And then sometimes it's not enough just to do one soap up. So that's stopped lathering, then a rinse. Not all the pigment there is quite out yet, so I'm going to have another go at it. Go at the soap. And then this time it bubbled up a lot more because the brush was already more clean. So it's created a lot more lather this time. I don't use any special texturized brush cleaning implements or brush mats. And that's not really necessary because your hand, especially here, has all the ridges and texture it already needs in combination of the rubbing, gentle rubbing, I find that's enough to properly clean brushes. And then it may appear that the tips are still colored. That's because um, with fine goat hair, the tips are more translucent. And especially when they're wet, they'll make the hair appear darker. So the more translucent the tips are, the more they pick up um, their ambient coloring. So they'll appear darker than the thicker opaque parts of the hair, which are closer to the ferrule. And then again, squeezing the water out. Okay. As for drying, normally, this is good enough. This is a towel rack bar. Take a rubber band, loop it, put it across, up, over the top, 
and it just holds it there by friction. Let's zoom it in a little bit. Yeah, so that's how I dry my brushes for the most part. So what I'm doing is, if this is the towel bar, putting a brush, going behind the bar, and up over the top. So it's just like this. And that's, and then I leave that for up to a week, especially for face brushes so that I can be sure all the glue in here is dried. And then as for the dishwater, this, you can kind of see its color now, dump that out, give it a rinse, water's running clear again, and then literally rinse and repeat. So dampen the brush. And then at no point do I submerge the brushes. This is generally frowned upon because submerging your brushes introduces a lot more water up the ferrule. But as I said, due to capillary action of the water, it's gonna, some of the water is gonna get into the ferrule regardless and you want to make sure it all gets dried out. This one's coming out fairly easily and fairly quickly because it's a th rather thin brush and there's not as much built up in there to clean. This was also a contour brush. So the pigments used for contour, which oops, oh, 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 oh. Um, those tan pigments generally come out a lot easier than red and purple pigments that I use for blush. And then I can hear some of you asking, what about brush guards? I actually put brush guards on after the brush is fully dry. So um, I like to use either a net or tissue paper. Tissue paper can get a little bit wasteful, so I prefer to use nets, but if I forget to bring them with me somewhere, I'll wrap them in tissue paper and let me show you how I do that. This is one ply tissue paper. So what I do with this, so now I have something about the length or the width of the brush. And I just roll it in while the brush is still damp. The water is soaking through the paper and that helps adhere the paper and keep it there. And then I just hang this up on a bar upside down and then the paper will dry with the brush. So the paper will actually help pull moisture from the brush and then the water will evaporate from the paper itself. So it kind of acts like a wicking layer on sports jackets and just pulls the moisture out. And then after the brush is dry, you just peel off the paper and the paper acts as a card and you have a nicely controlled brush. So that's one method that I like to do. But normally I'm too lazy to wrap every single brush. So I just put a net guard on my brushes after I'm done um, drying them for about a week. Let me show you that toilet paper technique. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. That toilet paper technique with a smaller brush, like an eye brush. This is the Bishodo large eye brush. And then with eye brushes especially, it's gonna be hard not to get the ferro or the ferro meets the edge of the hair under the water. It's gonna happen. So don't forget about it too much. Don't freak out about your glue in the ferro being weakened. You can mitigate it by just letting it dry and rest for a week if you want to be sure. Okay, this was actually a bad example to show you the uh, improvised neck guard, the improvised brush guard on because this is Canadian squirrel or pine squirrel, one of the squirrels, but this is one of the squirrels that behaves nicely 
and will dry by itself into a good shape. So I just kind of lightly glide my fingers over and pull it into the shape I want, shaping it, and then leave that to dry. Let me find a goat hair eye brush to wash. Okay, so say this brush, floofy, it's probably not gonna dry by itself into the greatest shape, it'll probably be really unruly and like puffed out. So we're gonna wash this and roll it in a paper guard. And this is not the dirtiest brush either because I was using this for under eye translucent setting powder. So for a brush that doesn't have much pigment on it, like this translucent setting powder brush, basically I just go until it feels right. I don't have the level of pigmentation left in a brush to tell me if it's clean or not. Because like I said, the tips of the hairs are going to be darker and thus make the brush appear to still be dirty. So it's really a touch and go at this point. I should also mention that this soap is lightly scented with essential oils. So I can smell when all the soap is out of the brush or not. Okay, so shake the one around, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then it's gonna be pretty hard to shape this without a brush guard. So I either put a brush guard on it once it's completely dry and let it sit for half a day so then the hairs reshape it, or I just take my paper and then I roll it. And again, this is probably too big actually. And again, the water in the brush is what makes the, the water in the hairs is what makes the paper guard adhere to the brush. There we go. Just put these over there and then hang them up later. What you can also do is, um, I'll show you that in a little bit, actually. So dark haired brushes. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. You kind of have to just go off of your dishwater to tell when it's clean, because if it's clean, it'll stop releasing pigment. And then, so I'm watching the water as I tap and judging, okay, how much pigment is there? How much more soap do I possibly need? And then as I'm squeezing the dishwasher, um, dish washed liquid out into the sink, I'm looking for pigment and it looks like all the pigment out. And now I can rinse. This was surprisingly easy to get clean considering I used black and blue eyeshadow with this. So all the water that I'm dripping into the sink runs clear, not brush. Is clean. Foundation brush. This one is a paddle foundation brush, so I really have to make sure I get um, the foundation that has been pushed into those core hairs clean. So I'm going to get it saturated. And then I'm already pushing out some flesh colored liquid. <laughs> And it's not lathering at all, which tells me this brush is pretty filthy. And I'm definitely going to have to change the dish wa water after this brush. I'm almost embarrassed to show it. Let's give this a rinse. I've heard of people using conditioning shampoo to wash their brushes before. I've tried it and I haven't liked the result. I Granted, I've only tried it with one conditioning shampoo. Okay, that needs more. I've only tried it with one type of um, two-in-one conditioning shampoo, but I wasn't going to run out and get another bottle of two-in-one to test out brush washing. So I just resorted to using a face bar that I know removes my face makeup pretty well. 
I'm lazy. I'm too lazy to, lazy to do a double cleanse. I'm fine enough with using just a bar and a separate eye and makeup remover. No breakouts. That's good. Okay. And then, so especially here, making sure I massage the inner bristles as well. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Water runs clear. Okay, good enough. Here we are, a white goat brush. This one will probably need a guard. And I'll just show you the paper guard, the toilet paper technique again. <laughs> Even though I normally just let the brushes dry and then put a net, one of those stretchy net guards on. And occasionally my fingers get tired, switch to the other hand because I'm pathetic. Okay, that's actually clean. It just still looks dirty because yay, the hairs are just that fine. And then if you're ever unsure, lather it up again. Yep, still looks the same or not. And I'm not mashing it super hard. I'm just swirling it with about the same amount of pressure that I would use if I was uh, applying makeup to my face. Did I say it was clean? No, I meant, yup, it's still dirty. That's why I went in for the second pass of soap and rinsing. Freudian slip. I was wishing this was already clean, but nope, a little more stubborn pigment in there. And now it's clean. It'll be like this sort of light beige yellow color rather than what it was earlier, which was still kind of dusky looking like this that had a bit of pink to it. Clean goat hair will be yellowish and look like it has jaundice. As for squirrel hair, you really have to touch and go and see how it feels. You can always rinse. Ah, I forgot the soap. You can always do another soap and rinse, so it's no big deal. Yes, they are expensive, but they are tools. They are meant to be used, and good tools should be respected and cleaned. And then squeeze. Whenever I squeeze, I'm not pulling on the hairs. I'm just progressively going down. And that water was still running a little bit cloudy, so I'm gonna do another rinse, get it saturated, and do as much rinsing as I need until the water runs clear and is satisfactory. This one is a very dirty one. So I'm gonna actually do this, soak it up. And what I'm doing in here is as I'm pressing into the dish, I'm just kind of scrubbing it with my finger as if my finger was a toothbrush. That's what I'm doing in the dish here. 
holding at about 45 degree angle, saturating most of the brushes, uh, most of the bristles. I mean, the whole head is saturated now, but I have it at about 45 degree angle in there. I'm not pressing perpendicularly because then I can't get most of the bristles. Still dirty, okay. I'm gonna do a rinse. Another soap up. And ideally you'll want to have some music that you really like as you're doing this. Some other soaps that I really like, um, I went through two of the Beauty Blender solid cleansing bars. Those are very nice. Bit fragranced, but I mean, you wash all of it out anyway, so it doesn't really matter in the end. That was actually one of the tougher brushes to clean. All of that black, blue, green pigment really like to stay in there. And I think this one is finally clean. Okay. And that's basically my brush washing tutorial. So to reiterate, um, I just have my brushes that I want to wash, a soap dish, because as I'm jabbing the pre-dampened um, pre brush onto the soap, you get a lot of water that collects, dump that out, have a good soap that you like. Rule is if you'll use it on your face, it's perfectly fine to use on your brushes. And then if you're not using a solid soap, like say you're using a liquid face cleanser, depending on how much your cleanser lathers, um, I would dilute it. So before I started using the solid soaps, I would use the Philosophy cleansing, um, cleansing, Purity Cleansing Gel. That one foamed up a lot. So I would dilute that, say, one to five until um, I had the lather ratio that I was comfortable with. And I didn't feel like I was just washing endless bubbles out of it. I do like soaps that lather because they indicate to me about how dirty the brush is. So some of the brushes, for example, you saw me wash them twice. The second time I went into the soap and started um, swirling around in my hand, it made a lot more bubbles, which indicated to me it was a lot cleaner than the first pass. And if it makes a lot of bubbles right off the go, that means, okay, it's pretty much clean, which means when I rinse and when I'm done with this rinse, it's probably good to go and completely clean. And then this dish I have here is not totally necessary, but I like to have it because it gives me a surface to work with that I can clean the brushes onto. Otherwise, I'd just be going like this all the time. And then this provides me with some pre-rinse water. So say I have a really dark pigment on here. I go in, clean it, rinse, squeeze out. Okay, still really dark. Go in, clean, rinse, squeeze out. Less dark, less dark. And then once it gets to a point where it's, okay, that's pretty much just soap bubbles now. Then I go into the sink again and then rinse it until the cloudy water, which has soap bubbles in it, runs clear and is just water. And that way I know all of the soap is out. So that's pretty much how I wash my brushes. Get it pre-dampened, get it soaked up, lather it up, swirl it around in here, watch all that pigment release, and it's a really satisfying process. Squeeze it, oh, still some pigment, less pigment. Okay, let's like really scrub in there, watching a cloud of pigment come out. Okay, that's pretty much just soap water coming out now. Saturate it. Okay. Water's pretty, looking pretty white. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, now the water's finally clear. <laughs> Give it a sniff, smells like wet squirrel <laughs> uh, instead of the soap. So I know the soap is out of my brush and squeeze all the water out as much as I can. 
And something that I actually like to do before I hang the brushes up is grab a towel. This is just a regular face towel. And what I'll do is I will blot the, as much water as I can out of it by squeezing. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Blot the water out. Reshape the brush. Progressively blot, squeeze. Reshape it. And then what I'm doing to reshape it is just making my hands like this under the towel and then just applying very light pressure, almost like I'm like brushing it. And then that part of the towel is all wet. So now I'm gonna to go to another part of the towel. Uh, I find that Turkish hand towels because they're 100% cotton work really well for this. This is not Turkish cotton, but that's what I prefer using. But hey, beggars can't be choosers right now. All of those are in the wash and then reshape lightly. And now I'm ready to either hang them up on a shower bar, or if you don't have too many brushes, you can take a brush storage thingy like this. You see this brush bar in my videos all the time. So securely plop that in. And then what I do is I take some poster putty, which is like this adhesive putty that you use for sticking posters on the wall that you can like remove with impunity. It won't lift your paint or anything. I like stick it on to the side of this and then I take this and then I stick it to a wall and just, I just leave it there for a week. Oops. Okay. That wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. Okay, that fell out because yes, this is supposed to separate. But when I have brushes that fill the thing, like it's just filled to capacity, what that does, it expands the black silicone holder inside the case. So then that expansion presses against the wall and the friction just holds it there. Because I don't have enough brushes in there, that's why it fell out. Normally it's pretty safe. I've never seen that happen before until I just tried demonstrating it now. And that's how I wash my brushes. I'm pretty sure I missed something. So if you still have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will answer it. And if they're asked enough, I'll put it in the description box or make another separate document for Q&A. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching, even though I, you didn't get to see my face this time. And until next time, stay safe and enjoy your clean brushes.